All right, now let's look at the last example, example 15. Um, in this example, we are still calculating the same thing, v0 and v1, but the random variable now is a continuous random variable. So if you look at what we have over here, we still have the stock option model, and we have now c is equal to 1. So here we have c is equal to 1 in, over here. And the density function we have is f of x is equal to 1 in the interval negative 3 fourth to 1 fourth. OK, so that's uh, the continuous random variables density function. So now let's look at uh, how we can actually solve this problem over here. Um, first, let's try to see what is the expected value of this x. So according to the formula, e of x is the integral from negative infinity to positive infinity x f of x dx. And because f of x is 1 over interval negative 3 fourth to 1 fourth, and everywhere is 0, so this is what we have. And we have 1 half x squared after we integrate great and then we have negative three fourth okay so when we plug it in we will have one half one fourth squared is one over 16 and negative three fourth squared is going to be nine over 16 so we will have negative one fourth and again, that makes perfect sense because we have uniform distribution. So the mean is just the average of two uh, endpoints. Okay. Um, but if we look at the meaning of it, that means on average, the stock market is going to drop by a quarter of unit here. All right. Now, remember, we still have the same Bellman equation that Vn of s is equal to maximum. s minus c is s minus 1. And this over here is expected value of Vn minus 1, the so expected value of Vn minus 1. But we have um, a change of the stock price for next period. And this one over here, we should have f of x dx because now we have um, continuous random variable. So this is what we're going to do. First, um, so the expected value over here, this is the second one, the expected value of v0 of s plus x is exactly this integral from negative infinity to positive infinity. The function over here, v0, s plus x, and then f of x, dx. Because f of x is 1 only over the interval of negative 3 fourth to 1 fourth. So this is what we have. We have v0 of s plus x times 1, so just dx. And then again, if we look at this integral over here, we see that there is a parameter s over here. This s is a parameter. Okay. And x is our dummy variable over here. So we need to be careful again to how to integrate this function. First of all, it helps if we actually um, write down the formula of v0 of s plus x. So Let's first look at this one, v0 of s plus x. We remember that this is the maximum of s plus x minus c and 0. right? That's what we uh, have. Or if we want to write down in a piecewise format, easier to, for us to do, is that if s plus x minus c bigger than or equal to 0, then we have s plus x minus c. 
if s plus x minus c is less than zero, then we get zero over here because we are choosing the bigger value. Now, because we want to integrate with respect to x, it's better actually to write down the formula this way. It's x plus s minus c and zero. And this is when x is greater than or equal to c minus s. And this is when x is less than c minus s. So that's what we have. If we want to graph it, we can do the following thing. We say, OK. Now c is 1. So we can just write down again. This is going to be x plus s minus 1, x bigger than or equal to 1 minus s, and this x less than 1 minus s. Now because we are integrating with respect to x, so we consider s over here is a parameter. And we don't know where 1 minus s is, so we can just say, ah, here is 1 minus s. And if you look at what kind of function we have, we have this function. If it's less than 1 minus s, it's going to be 0. Okay. And if it's bigger than that, slope is 1, and this is what we have. Okay. So this function is our v naught of s plus x. Okay. And how can we integrate this function over here over the interval of negative 3 fourths to 1 fourth? It depends on where this 1 minus s is. So now we can integrate this function over these two points. One is negative 3 fourths, right? And the other one is 1 fourth. So this is the interval we are integrating. And from this diagram, we say it's going to be 0. But there are other situations it won't be 0. For example, um, if, say, negative um, 3 fourth over here, and this is 1 fourth. And if you have 1 minus s over here, then you will see the integral isn't going to be 0, because we have graph like that. And Based on this observation, we know we have actually three situations. This is situation one, this is situation two, and there is another one, like the one we actually had in the past. Okay, so this is the third situation we can have based on this parameter. This is negative three-fourth and positive one-fourth. Okay? And you can have one minus s is over here. Then you can have the diagram of this function looks like this. This is case three. Okay. So based on these three cases, we are going to evaluate this integral. What it means is that this expected value depends on the value of s. Okay. So let's again call this one uh, function w. Call w of s is equal to v naught s plus x expected value. Okay, this is the one we are looking at. This is what we are calculating. Okay, so if we look at case one, um, case one, case one over here, what we have is that we have one minus s is greater than one fourth, right? What it means is this one simply means one minus fourth is going to be greater than s, or s is less than 3 fourth. Okay. Right? Yeah. So if that's the case, then we have 0. If this is the case, then we see that, say, when s is less than 3 fourth, and then we have v naught of s plus x is equal to 0. Over this interval, over negative 3 fourth and 1 fourth.
So from here, what we have is that so if we integrate from negative fourth to one fourth and v naught s plus x d, dx, this is going to be equal to zero when s is less than three fourths. Now, there is a meaning for this one. Try to see what it means. This one means if the current stock price, current stock price, S, if it's less than three fourth, then for tomorrow, S plus X, its maximum value is going to be three fourth plus one fourth because capital X can only be at the most one fourth, and that's going to be equal to one. Now remember, C is also equal to one. So in this kind of situation, what it means is that profit will be zero. Yeah, there is no expected profit for tomorrow because your premium is one and the maximum stock price for tomorrow is also one. So the expected profit for tomorrow is going to be zero. So that's the meaning of this computation, but um, other situations are the same. So let's look at case two. In case two, we have one minus s is between one fourth and negative three fourth. This is one. Uh, we will worry about the range a little bit later, but we can see that this time, if you look at expected value of v naught of s plus x. We just look at diagram over here. The integral is going to be from one minus s to one, one fourth. So it's going to be from one minus s to one fourth. And your function is x plus, your function is x plus s minus one. And that's your value. We can see that it's over here. Uh, it's over here, this value over here, okay? And then we integrate dx, okay? And when we do that, we can simply use um, one half of x plus s minus one squared. Because if you take derivative, you get this. This is one of the antiderivatives. Okay? And then we put one fourth and one minus s inside. And then evaluate this one. We will have one half. Um, it's going to be one fourth plus s minus one squared. So this is going to be one half s minus three fourths squared. So that's the answer we have in case two. And case three, we will have the entire function. We can see in case three, one minus s is less than negative three fourth. And when we integrate, we have this entire area, right? And that's what we have over here. So we have a trapezoid and we have in case three, expected value of v naught s plus x it's going to be negative three fourth to one fourth, and we put x plus s minus one over here and dx. It's the same integrand, so we have one half x plus s minus one squared and plug in one fourth negative three fourths. And then plug in to get the value, we have one half. The first expression is the same, s minus three fourths squared. And second one, we have um, s, when x is negative, so it's gonna be exactly s minus, all right, uh, here um, we continue. It's s minus, when we plug in negative three over four, we get, seven over four squared. Okay. So that's the value when 
we have for the expected value in case three. Okay. So combine all these three cases, we end up with a formula for W of S. So we look at for case one, if S is less than three fourth, we get a zero. And if S is greater than seven fourth, we have this big expression, one half S minus three fourth squared and minus S minus seven fourth squared. So in between, it must be S less than or equal to seven fourth and bigger than or equal to three fourth. And the answer is one half S minus three fourth squared. Okay. Now let's try to see what kind of function we have over here because we will need this function later on to find v1 of s, right? Um, so the last expression over here we can simplify. This is one half of a squared minus b squared, right? So we can use uh, some algebra to simplify this. We add them up. We have two s minus seven, um, seven plus three over 4, that's 10 over 4, and multiplied by a minus b, and that will give us exactly 1. So we end up with s minus 10 over 2 is 5, 5 over 4, and that's the last branch. So let's look at what kind of um, graph we have for w, s. Okay, so we have 3 fourth over here, and we have 7 fourth over here. We don't have to be accurate. Just see the diagram of W, S. Here is 0, and beyond 7 fourth, we have a straight line, and we just need to look at the value over here. At this point, we see this is exactly 1 half, because 7 fourth minus 5 fourth is 1 half, right? And here we have 45 degree again. So this is s minus 5 over 4. And in between, we have a parabola. So we have something like this. Okay. And this is our function w of s. This is w of s. And we use this one to calculate v1 of s, because we know v1 of s is the maximum of s minus 1 and w of s. All right, 